our last uh, feature match here. We've got Riku Kumagai in the feature match area. He's seen the amount across from Shintaro Ishimura here. And you can see a different take on the format than we've seen thus far, Paul. Uh, Naya Runes in the hands of Riku Kumagai and it looks like Jund mid-range mid -range here for Shintaro. Yeah, and I'm excited to see the configuration of Shintaro's list. He's always the guy who brings slightly off the wall decks off meta decks, you never see him kind of play the consensus best deck. So I feel like there's likely going to be some uh, some interesting card choices from him. Uh, as we come in here, Paul, you will not be shocked to hear that Naya Runes picked up game number one. We're heading into game number two. So that's Riku Kumagai up a game over Shintaro. Looks like Shintaro is up a game, but... Not... Shintaro? Yeah, I just see a... a, a he's got oh, you're little... right. It does actually show that way. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll switch that over. Yes, you're right. So somehow Naya Runes did not win game number one. <laughs> I guess uh, Jun Midrange found the way through. Here's Duress to start things off. There's actually some targets here too. Yeah, got that Tamiyo safekeeping. Mm -hmm. uh, excellent sideboard card. A couple of those. But it's going to be Thundering Rebuke that hits the yard this time. Shintaro wanting to potentially protect that uh, Briar Ridge tracker down the line. Also, when you know your opponent has two Tamiyo safekeeping, it does help a little bit. I mean, it still does the thing it does, but, you know, somebody like Shintaro can play around that reasonably. Yeah, you can choose to just kill the Generous Visitor right away, or you can just play Valky. You know Riku's hand. You know that he only had the Jukai Naturalist in hand. Right. And he's going to go ahead and take that away. Looking at the the angel here, double white on four mana. It looks like it's pretty far away here from Kumagai, though. Just as I say that, <laughs> there's a <laughs> land off closer. the top of the library. That's right. Yeah. But uh, but no trigger here. Yeah. And and you will often see that in post-board matchups with the Naya Rune stack, where um, you're, 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 you, you end up boarding in some cards like the Tamiyo Safekeeping, and all of a sudden you find yourself with slightly less enchantments. So not quite as explosive as... Um, the the game one matchups will be. However, it is a necessary evil because so many of these players will be ready for this matchup and will have a lot of removal. Valky's going to crash in there, and now we're going to see the Briarbridge tracker here. And uh, there's there's another land. Wow. So cruise so right into go. it. Legion Angel um, doesn't do anything for the Naya Runes package, but it's just such a good card. It's like why not? Let's just, you know, any deck that's playing white basically just plays four copies of Legion Angel into 75. Yeah, this is one of those cards that took a little while to catch on and now has become kind of a, a default for decks that can cast it. Yeah, and if you noticed, Riku had the option of uh, only picking one of two Legion Angels, mm -hmm. and he does have four into 75, so it looks like he brought in the second copy after sideboard. No need to be greedy. Just want to draw one. I'm kind of a two-two split. You're a, you're a two-two split. That that yeah that that sits nicely for me. I I, I think uh, uh, I I believe Reed Duke was also pretty high on the two-two split. So oh, you're in good company. That makes me you're feel relieved. Company. Yeah. The Duke approves. One interesting card that Shintara has in hand uh, is Unleash the Inferno. Yeah, I saw and, that. And um, now it does. It is a bit of a clunky card, right? It's kind of expensive, four mana, right? However, in a lot of the mid-range matchups that you'll see in the field, it's an extremely potent card. The fact that there are so many good enchantments and artifacts that you'll see people play means that oftentimes it'll just get two permanents, right? Imagine a scenario where Unleashed Inferno goes, hey, I'm going to kill your creature plus get your wedding announcement, right? Huge. Or I'm getting your three drop and I'm killing your Asika's Chariot. So... That, that, you know, that's kind of one of the reasons to play Jund, right? It's just you have access to this really, really powerful uh, card that comes out of a lot of these sideboards that allow you to kind of uh, get get a built-in two-for-one out of your removal spell. Yeah, interesting to note there that Shintaro not being greedy with it. He just killed a Legion Angel so he could get an attack with his tracker, recognizing that there's another Legion Angel in hand plus the two safekeepings. The shields were down and there weren't, there weren't any enchantments coming somehow, right? You'd think that Kumagai's deck would have produced one by now, whether it's from a creature or not. 
but there's not. There's nothing, you know, he drew a Kami of uh, transients and, and that's not an enchantment either. So yeah, he's just gonna say, all right, I'm just gonna use this as kind of a clunky removal spell. But I'll tell you, you know, when you're looking at trying to do this, he's gonna use Voltage Search to kill the other angel and just plow through <laughs> these angels. That is a very tough sell. Yeah, and um, this is one of those ugly games that the Naya Runesec needs to figure out a way to win. And Shintaro <laughs> he just, attacking. He turned he Valky a into a naturalist. Yeah, it's a life Relevant. linker now. Oh. oh, that was a nice draw here. Circle of a confinement here from Riku. That that means he can sequence it where he goes Kami of Transients into the circle. You get to put two counters and get back your naturalist. Now, Shintaro does have a Shatter Skull Smashing, so we'll be able to get at least the two creatures on board off the battlefield. Yeah, and that's huge, especially with these particular creatures. The Tamiyo's safekeepings have really been a liability thus far for Kumagai. We'll see if he finds a way to leverage them at some point. Finally, an enchantment appears, and now he can start leveraging that. There's a braid for Shintaro. Oh, excuse me. He is one mana short. So this oh, is uh, you're right. This is tough here now if you're Shintaro. You've got a Briarbridge Tracker, which is a lot less threatening without that uh, artifact on the battlefield. You can only kill one of these creatures. Yikes. But remember, Riku does have an enchantment to play. That's right. He just got back the Naturalist. Boy, and that was a big swing the, for Kuma guy. Yeah, and given the double safekeeping, you do want to fire off a removal spell as, uh, before Riku has the opportunity to untap here. Yeah, he's trying to get in there, but down to eight goes Kumagai. But you can't imagine that the pressure that Shintaro has is enough to, to finish off. I mean, he's down to just the two-powered creature. Right? And, and Riku, just again, just... This Legion Angel is going to do a lot of work. Now you have the mana to protect your Legion Angel. And Shintaro is only sitting on that really, really expensive removal spell. Patience here from Kumagai. And the Legion Angel really doing work because Shintaro took a line where he was trying to get Kumagai dead as fast as possible, trying to leverage the fact that Kumagai kept tapping out and leaving those safekeepings in hand where he oh. couldn't actually use them. Oh, Riveteer's Charm off the top here for Ishimura. That's a nice way to play around the safekeeping. You can go Riveteer's Charm and that ensures that you get uh, a Legion Angel off the battlefield. I I I'm wondering if... Uh, if there was maybe some consideration to just cast it and then attack? Perhaps. Boy, it just doesn't feel like a winning line, right? I, it's so hard. Like, he's not going to be able to keep getting through at that tracker over the course of this game. Right, wow, but... another you, circle? I can't imagine Shintaro not trying to cast the River Tears Charm to get the Legion Angel off the battlefield. Yeah, my assumption is that he's hoping that Kumagai does what he's done here, which is at least put another plus one, plus one counter on it. There goes the tracker. Oh, he's oh. looking to draw cards. Wow. All he, right. he's, he said, you know what? Meet him, I can't continue to one for one here. So he is going to exile okay. the top three cards and see what he finds. <laughs> Me oh, hook? this is business. No. Oh, it's triple lands off the top into a duress. Ugh. Shintaro trying to put himself... Smashing. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to scoop him up. You know, uh, you know that that's... I mean, that makes sense. You're, you're in a position where your your removal spells are just not going to be able to fight through the safekeepings. The, the, the real... The best answer that you have... Likely, it's, it's, you know, multiple charms. I don't even see a Meat Hook Massacre here. Uh, it looks like it was in his sideboard, so that was not a card that he could have found. Well, we we're in game two, right? So maybe he had it. Uh, that, yeah, game two. Well, I just, yeah, I, I, I guess maybe he took it out now. I'm just, now we're in game oh, three. Oh, you mean yeah. it was in his actual sideboard still? Not yeah, right now we're in sideboarding, card. and I see it in his sideboard, so. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so that was desperation time there for Shintaro, recognizing that he was so far behind that. I mean, the truth is he kind of already made that bed, right? Like he kept yeah. going one for one removal while the getting was good. 
but he had not enough pressure to back it up. Ultimately, it ended up just being that two, three tracker. And that was not even close, right? Yeah. That, that, that wasn't even in, uh, in range. Simply because Riku can put out so much power and toughness. Yeah, it was a slow start for him. But, you know, once he started casting the angels, once he started finding a couple enchantments, uh, you know, his board state just gets massive so quickly that uh, Shintaro wasn't going to be able to one for one with everything that Riku played that game. Yeah, and, and, and th you know, that, that's the thing about this Naya Runes deck. It's a surprisingly resilient deck, right? A lot mm. of times people just probably look at the deck or when, when you talk about the deck, you're like, oh, it just does the one thing slap on a bunch of runes onto my creatures and, and call it a day. But I mean, with, with, the, with the Fable of the Mirror Breaker, the addition of the Legion Angels and Showdown of the Skulls, it does a really good job of just playing the game of, hey, look, I'm gonna play some threats. I have Tamiyo Safekeeping as backup. And if you're just going to rely on purely removal spells to beat me, that's not gonna get it done. Finally see a rune there for Kumagai. We haven't really seen much of that. It just looked like a more kind of, I don't know, a mid-range enchantments deck or something last time. But we do have to remember it does have that extremely high power ceiling if the right cards come together. See Unleash the Inferno there for Shintaro. We'll see if he can get a two-for-one out of it this time. Whiff. In the meantime, he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna play Valky and be a little unhappy about what he sees here. A little Valky did do work for him before. Another land off the top though for Kumagai. Does yeah, he need to just, just draw play, a card here? Yeah. Yeah, just just put put the rune on the on the lair there. It does get the pump effect, and it will be a trampler mm -hmm. if he ever chooses to to activate it. One thing I want to point out in Riku Kumagai's specific version of the Naya Runes deck is he leans less heavily on the combo than most other versions of runes. When you look okay. at most versions of the Naya Runes deck, you usually see something like nine to ten copies of runes at least. Mm -hmm. His version only plays six. Oh, two of each. Okay. Right? It's playing the full four copies of the Circle of Confinement and chooses to have a little more interaction, uh, recognizing that kind of two of the big decks kind of coming into this will be the Mirror, right? Where Circle of Infi Confinement really shines. And mm -hmm. Circle of Confinement also is a great answer to Rafine. There you go. He's going to use it on the token here to uh, try to save a little life and stop the mana development here for Shintaro. But he did just get chapter two, and here comes the Briar Bridge tracker now. And this is a good amount of pressure. Riku doesn't have a creature. He's he's got the the showdown, but I mean he's gonna take a pretty big chunk of damage here, and that's a reflection of Kiki Jiki that'll come into play next turn for some more attacks. Needs a good showdown. Is that good? Not sure that that's going to be enough. Um, can't play both of the fables here, right? right. Uh, no naturalist or anything like that going here. He's definitely falling behind. And Shintaro also has two removal spells, one of which cannot be protected by a Tamiyo safekeeping if Rico ha had it in hand. Yeah, so we're going to see a naturalist probably into a fable. That, that would turn the Naturalist into a 3-3. Three, three. You always kind of want to have a creature in play first before Chapter 2 comes off on the showdown. Although I guess in this instance that would have been worse, given that Shintaro does have Unleashed the Inferno in hand. So the only creature he has in sight is a Generous Visitor here? Yeah, so we're looking at a Generous Visitor and a Fable. Yikes. And Shintara has answers to both and then can get in for eight next turn. Excuse me, can get in for 10 next turn. So I think this is just, this might just be over here for Riku. Whoa, what a start here for Shintaro Shimura applying maximum pressure to Kumagai. You can see what he was trying to do before. There's the visitor. Could, no, no, there's no draws here. So yeah, I mean, Shintaro is just gonna be able to kill both of these creatures here copy the tracker and attack for 10. Perfect draw here from Shintaro. I mean, everything lining up exactly how he needs. 
And, and I imagine Shintar is going to want to utilize the mana here, just saying, hey, look, if you have the safekeeping, you have the safekeeping. But using Unleash would be better, is what you're saying, because well, it, it's, a, it's a better use of the mana. Right. He does have enough to do it either way, right? Like to, to present lethal either way. But he does have to use the Unleash at some point. Right. All right, so here it is, is Riveteer's Charm. This is the guaranteed removal spell. That's going to get the visitor off the battlefield. Yeah, that one gets around safekeeping anyway. Oh, he... That's going to ah, shrink down the tracker. It does. So no lethal attack anymore. But this is this is just Shintaro recognizing that he's ahead and basically just trying to play around the safekeeping. So th okay. that's kind of... You know, obviously, we see all the information. Everything is space up, right? So right. for us, we're going, well, why don't you just go for lethal? Well, I yeah. mean, Shintaro well, is just making sure he has all of his bases covered. He, he drew Voltage Surge. So now he gets to say a little test spell here to see how oh, this works. Excuse and me, then he course. has Unleash in the, no, as his backup plan. Yeah, no, the, 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 this is on me. This is on me. Copying the tracker, of course, makes a treasure. Oh, that sure. That still make a lethal attack. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Riku Kumagai has also noticed this. He did not have the Tamiyo safekeeping and Jund mid-range in the hands of Shintaro Ishimura will pick up victory here for him. So a nice win for an unconventional deck here in the opening round, Paul.